Over the past few months I played non-stop Neon for the Neon to Diamond series. And in these months I learned a lot about Neon. So in this video I'll go over everything I learned during the series. From beginner Neon tips and tricks to advanced Neon tips and tricks. This video got it all. Also we recently hit 450,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for the support. We're getting closer to beat our rival Carmano my friends. With your help we could do it. And now let's start the video. So let's start with their E ability, High Gear. This ability looks very easy to use, but it could be complicated when you first start out. First, you have to know this very important mechanic. When you want to rotate, most of us have the habit to pull out your knife. This is of course because you run faster with your knife, but with Neon, you have to be careful with it. When you pull out your knife and use your E ability, after you dash, you will also have your knife in your hand. And when you switch to your gun while dashing, it takes a while before you can shoot. So make sure you have your gun in your hand before you run away. This way you can shoot immediately and you have more chance that you make those kills. The next thing about her E ability is the timing of your dash. Try to dash a little bit before you go around the corner. Let's go, I'm gonna... Beam. This way you'll be able to shoot your gun as soon as you see the enemy. If you dash a little later, you give the enemies more time to react. And that's not smart, my friend. Here's a good example. In this round, I dashed before I went around the corner. So when I stood still, I immediately could shoot on jet. Beam. There's one exception though, when you use your ultimate then you can shoot while dashing. Here's an example, in this clip I dashed a little bit later, but luckily I didn't have to wait till I could shoot with my Fendel because I could shoot while dashing, very OP. <laughs> Oh, now let's talk about the C ability, fast lane. If I had to make one golden rule about Neon, it's about her wall. It's very simple, aim over things and not towards things. Why? If you aim towards things, there will be a small gap. Take this clip on bind for example. If you want to plant a spike and you aim towards the truck, there will be a small gap on the end. Sadly, I had to find it out the hard way. I have a knife. Oh, oh, he's right. there, bro. And you can fix it so easily, just aim a little bit above the truck and there will be no gap at all. In fact, it's way better because your wall will all the way extend to the far back. Another thing a lot of people are underestimating about your wall is the amount of damage that it does. Especially because it's so long and there are two, it does a lot of damage to the enemy. Just imagine placing your wall like this and all the enemies are pushing through. Yeah, that will hurt the enemies, just like in this clip. I'm out of here. Oh, I got a kill uh, with my deep. firewall. Now our Q ability, Relay Bolt. Man oh man, their stun is so hard to control, especially when you first pick up Neon. But here are some tips. The first thing you have to know is that you can't really use a stun to enter a site. If you try to find a lineup for the entry, you will most likely only stun your teammate. So for the first peek, you probably won't use your stun. However, when you have a little bit more control and you can look into the site, then your stun starts to shine. Once you can look in the site, you can finally use those lineups to get people in those nasty corners. For example, that one on Ascent or these ones on split very nice now let's talk about the neon ultimate it's one of the most fun abilities in the game run and gun my friends when you cast it you will be very accurate even though you keep moving and that's exactly rule number one of the neon ultimate always keep moving if you see an enemy if you keep moving you make yourself of course a hard target i mean look at this clip easy peasy clutch with only 11 hp However, something that you have to be very careful with is that you don't move too much. And with that I mean, don't push too hard my friends. Keep moving does not mean keep pushing. Oh, I didn't mean to dash forward. Okay. When you cast your ultimate as Neon, the enemies will hear it and they most likely will run away. And as a Neon player, a lot of people might think that they waste their ultimate if they don't make kills at all. But the fact that the enemies run away and you get control over the site without even making a single kill is already good enough, my friend. Something else you should know about the Neon ultimate is the damage that it does. It doesn't matter where you hit the target, it could be on the legs, the body or the head, it does the same amount of damage. So big tip, always aim for the body. It's the bigger target, so easy peasy hits for you. Something that does impact the damage output is the range though. The further the target is away, the less damage your ultimate will do. And the damage difference is actually pretty significant. So be careful for mid to long range. Sometimes it's maybe even better to pull out your pistol or your gun. Especially when you miss a lot like in this clip. Don't wait for the recharge, just pull out your second gun and easy kill. Hey, zoom zoom kill, easy. What? Whoa, I got him. The last thing that you have to know about the Neon Ultimate is that it recharges her run and her dash. This means that when you know you're about to cast their ultimate, you don't have to be greedy with your run and you can dash at the end and still have your dash when you cast it. Very OP, my friends. And now let's talk about her playstyle. Let's start with the attacking side. There's one thing that Neon really shines in. I'm talking about lurking, flanking and rotating. Because of her E ability, Neon can be very dynamic and be all over the map. Some might already have seen this clip, but this is an insane clip that explains what I mean. At the start of the round, I decide to lurk on the opposite side of my team. The reason for this is that I might catch an enemy off guard while my team is making noise on the other side. Go, 
After this kill, I could easily run back to my teammates because Neon is extremely fast. But suddenly an enemy appeared. Whoa. At this moment, we knew that the last two enemies were in the defending spawn. So I decided to flank all the way towards B to the defending spawn to get behind the enemy. So basically, in this round, I was all over the map. Because of her E ability, I think Neon is the agent that gives the most amount of map pressure in the game. Enemy remaining. Oh, okay. Another thing that is especially important on the attacking side is playing around their ultimate. In my opinion, the Neon ultimate is one of the best ultimates in the game. So immediately, the first big tip, take your orbs. A lot of people are forgetting to take the orbs, but especially on Neon, it's so good. Take this round for example. We were eco and I still needed two points for my ultimate. That sounds really far away, but in fact, you only need two orbs. So we went to B side, took the first orb. Oh, sorry. And on bind, when you TP, you're almost immediately at the second orb, very OP. And because of this play, I got two easy kills in an eco round. Here we go. Look, Whoa, zoom, zoom, zoom kills. Oh yeah, if you say zoom, zoom kills, your zoom, zoom will do more damage. So keep saying that, my friends. One more thing about her ultimate. When you finally got it, forget about the lurking and the flanking, but play with your team. When you're about to enter the site, Neon is the entry fragger. So believe in yourself and go in first, my friends. Don't be afraid. Now let's talk about the defending side. Just like on the attacking side, Neon can rotate really quickly. And you can use this in two ways. The first one is playing a little bit close to the defending spawn. When you see that the enemies are on a different side, you can rotate like instantly, no problem. This means that there are basically always three people defending. You could also take it one step further and a sneaky thing that I used to do is stay in the defending spawn till the barriers are going down. Then you wait for the first shot and that's the moment that you rotate. Before flashes. If I played on backside B for example, there was no way I would be on A so quickly. And that's the reason why we won the round. Rotating in time and controlling the map is very OP. Seven. Molly though. Nice kill. Whoa. Can I help? Nice. One of them, ten, ten. Nice. Hi, good job boys, good job. Another way you could abuse the speed of Neon is playing on the outer sides of the map. Especially on maps with long rotate times like Icebox and Haven, this is very OP. I mean, imagine playing on this spot and suddenly your teammates are saying that the enemies are pushing C. With Neon, you could fully rotate in time while a normal agent would be still in the defending spawn. So when you're playing Neon, always keep an eye on the minimap and believe me, you will run a lot during the games. Now the big question, should you play Neon and is Neon easy to rank up with? I can't confirm this, but something that I believe is true, the more combat score you get the easier you will rank up and in my opinion neon is one of the easiest agents to get kills with because of her mobility you could always be at the gunfight in time and on top of that her ultimate is like zero skill kills you also don't need a lot of utility from your teammates because you got a wall and that's basically the same as a smoke and you got a beautiful stun to enter a side the perfect agent to solo queue my friends the only thing that it misses is a flash the only real problem i had is that when you first pick up neon you'll be very rusty with the agent especially her stun and her e are a little bit hard to master with one you play a couple of games you can get easy peasy kills and easy peasy rank up for you my friends i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i see you guys in the next one peace